Good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Aloha Wednesday. And it's nice to see everybody. Uh, wish I could see smiling faces, <laughs> but I know some of you are smiling behind the mask. I keep hoping these things will go away uh, before the Senate session does. Uh, let me call the committee to order. Um, we have one item on our agenda. Let me also introduce the committee members that are here. Senator Nishihara, Senator Riviere, and uh, I don't see anybody yet joining us on Zoom, but uh, I'm sure they will come in uh, as they uh, get into the Capitol. I was, I was forced to uh, change my um, sleeping locations from one hotel to the other and moved further into Waikiki as opposed to the beginning of Waikiki and took me a little longer to get here than I am. I, I had anticipated, so uh, apologies if we're getting started a little bit later than we might want to. Um, we do have one governor's message uh, on our agenda this morning. This is submitting for con consideration and confirmation to the Public Utilities Commission, gubernatorial nominee Naomi Kawai for a term to expire 6-30-2028. And we have uh, a number of uh, testifiers. Let me call first um, the director of DCCA, Ms. Alcuni. Good morning, Chair, members of the committee. Pat Alcuni Colon. I'd like to stand on our written testimony in support of Ms. Kawai's nomination. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, testimony from the PUC Chair, Mr. Griffin. Good morning. That's not, okay, that's not. Um, I can't see that far without glasses. Uh, okay. Uh, um, the chair of the PUC sent in testimony and support. Uh, we should have on the Zoom uh, Department of Transportation, Patrick McCain. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Department of Transportation strongly supports Governor Message 75 for appointing Naomi Kauai to the Public Utilities Commission. Um, Madam Chair, we believe that Naomi has uh, a unique um, experience uh, in environmental law, natural resource law, administrative law. Uh, we think that she will be an asset to the uh, Public Utilities Commission, and we urge the committee to favorably uh, uh, view her nomination. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. I will also want to welcome an, another committee member, uh, Senator Kurt Favella, to join us. Kurt, we've just gotten started, so we mm -hmm. haven't, uh, haven't missed much. Um, next, we have the Hawaii State Energy Office, Scott Glenn. Testimony and support. Uh, Americans for Democratic Action, Mr. Bickle, in opposition. Uh, Jeff Overton in support, uh, Kahuku Community Association, Sunny Unga. Are you on Zoom, Sunny? Yes, let me um, try set up this really quick. Oh, sorry. Just you need to click on uh, your video. We can hear you. Oh, okay. If not, please proceed. Uh, I think I got my video coming up soon, okay. All right, thank you so much. On behalf of Kuhuku Community Association, um, we would like to strongly oppose nominating Naomi Kuwaye um, to the Public Utilities Commission. Um, as most of you know, um, in 2019, over 200 community members were arrested attempting to stop the construction of the Napua Makani Wind Project. Too big, too close, 20 too many, not behind my Keiki schools, where issues and concerns our community brought up, vehemently opposing this renewable energy project for 10 years. Despite our community's numerous efforts and attempts to voice our concerns um, at various hearings, including those at the PUC, our, our voices and concerns were repeatedly not heard 
um, and ignored. For example, in 2014, Makani Pono Oko Kahuku was denied their motion to intervene Honey, can you as an interested just address party. This nominee and not a previous action of the PUC because it's really not on the agenda. Oh, I'm just listening examples of what our vo how our voices were ignored. Um, that, that's that's really kind of irrelevant at this point. We're we're looking for a, a new member to go on the PC, and what's happened in the past happened in the past. So if you could speak to the nominee. That's fine. If not, I'm going to move on. We have lots of people. Wanting okay. That. That's fine. Well, in order for us to reach the uh, successfully reach the 100% renewable energy goals, um, it is important that we have the support of the community for which um, the needed clean energy projects will be built. And these um, renewable projects must be community and culturally driven, as opposed to driven by developers and corporate interests. We are concerned um, that Mrs. Kuyave, although she has um, extensive legal background, um, we are concerned that she has extensive track record representing corporate utilities and developers. Um, as a community that has had firsthand experiences related to renewable energy projects that went, um, that ignored the community voices, we are urging um, a PUC represent, a representative that can listen to the community um, and represent those voices as well. Um, Thank you very much. We're gonna move on. Thank you. Uh, also wanna uh, introduce uh, other committee member, my vice chair that has joined us, Senator Shanley Chang. Uh, we also have testimony in opposition from 350 Hawaii, Sherry Pollock, uh, Progressive Democrats of Hawaii, Mr. Burdick. Um, and my mouse is not working. How to work a computer without a mouse. This is fun. There we go. Okay. Uh, Our Revolution Hawaii, Dave uh, Mullinex in opposition. Climate protectors, Ted Bolin. Is Ted here? We submitted testimony in opposition. We have testimony and support from Sandra Lawson. Uh, do we have Sierra Club of Hawaii, Wayne Chung Tanaka on Zoom? Uh, yeah. uh, good morning, <coughs> Chair Baker, Vice Chair Chang, members of the committee. Uh, Wayne Tanaka with the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Um, we did submit comments on, on this nomination. Um, I just want, would like to add, um, you know, we, we need to, we need utilities. Uh, we need to develop renewable energy resources uh, in a timely manner. Uh, and groups like the Sierra Club have been leading the charge um, over the years to help recognize this need for uh, a transition to a cleaner and more climate resilient future. Uh, but we, we can't get there in a timely manner or a just manner if we don't recognize and address the, the historical patterns where we haven't taken into account you know, some of these environmental justice and public trust considerations. And really the buck stop, starts and stops with the PUC as the regulator of our util, of utility development, um, especially since many of the folks who regulate uh, don't always have an understanding of the history of these islands in the context of environmental justice, injustices in Hawaii. Um, and so, you know, we, um, we really need the PUC and we need its commissioners to commit to making the institutional changes uh, that are, continue to be necessary to take these kinds of things into account. And so we really um, uh, emphasize and urge the committee and the nominee uh, to make commitments uh, today, make concrete commitments that, um, you know, the PUC will uh, do the research, do the outreach. Um, you know, if you can't walk a mile in someone's shoes, it's really hard to understand uh, what you can do, both and substantively and procedurally to uh, go forward. So just, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we have left late testimony from Kapuna for the Mo'opuna, uh, offering comments. Uh, Kauai Women's Caucus in opposition. Uh, Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii in opposition. Harold Ebeling in opposition. Patricia Ann Kimper. Mary Catherine Afable. Uh, Cheryl Reese in opposition. Rosemary Fazio, Michael Iosoa, Craig Wagnil in support, Andrew Isoda, Wendelin Cruz, Tom Keeney, 
Glenn Metzler, Tadia Rice, Thomas Brandt in opposition. We have testimony and support from Joyce Tamanaha, Takahashi, Vince Shigikuni in opposition from Jessica Hassan, Bethy Shapiro, testimony and support from Daniel Ordenecker, opposition from Jeremy Garrett, Max Toey, in support from Michael Gibson, Arnold, Pat Lee, uh, Jennifer Potter, Patrick McCain, Rick Sujimura, and uh, Yotsuji, Randy Iwasi. Uh, we have opposition from John Kawamoto. John, are you on the Zoom call? Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. My name is John Kawamoto. I'm testifying in opposition to the nomination of Naomi Kauai to the PUC. The purpose of the PUC is to protect the public interest in regulating public utilities that it oversees. Commissioners must have thorough knowledge of a myriad of technical details, but that is not enough. Commissioners must also understand the public interest and how it can be furthered in regulating public utilities. But even that is not enough. They must also be committed to advancing the public interest. Naomi Kawai's resume does not indicate that she has that commitment. For example, she represented NextEra in its attempt to acquire Hawaiian Electric Industries. The case went before the PUC, which expressed serious concerns about the acquisition. The PUC ultimately rejected the acquisition on the grounds that it did not serve the public interest. When the public interest was at stake, Naomi Kauai was on the other side. Furthermore, her nomination is being considered when distrust in government is receiving increased attention because of the admission of bribery by two former state legislators. There are many reasons for distrust. Another reason is what has been described as a revolving door between regulatory agencies and the industries they regulate. Studies show that one consequence of the revolving door is that regulators who are key industry personnel from the private sector may push for softer regulation that would benefit them later when they rejoin the private sector. Trust in government has been eroded with the nomination of Naomi Kauai because, because she lacks necessary qualifications. The Senate can help restore public trust by rejecting the nomination. Mahalo for your kind attention. Thank you, Mr. Kawamoto. We have testimony in support from Michael Dolling, from Charles Kaneshiro, from Gary Kabash, um, Kabayashi, uh, in opposition from Chris Matsumoto Wong, Kylie Tari Kinoshita, Natalia Kalani, uh, Raquel Sigato. Figueroa, Rick Rosen, Elizabeth Hansen, Roger Hansen, Ben Robinson, Jesse Palmer, Sequoia, Todd Yamashita, John um, Brodziak, in support from Kimberly Yoshimoto, Louis Oliveria, Wayne Nasser, op uh, opposed uh, Diane Ware, support Kevin Herring, Support Delman Law, opposition from Carolyn Eaton, Will Heron, uh, support from Francis Hogan, uh, Leo Asuncion. Good Chair, morning. Chair, Vice Chair, please. Of the committee. Um, you, please come to the table. Oh, I'm just going to stand on my Okay, all right, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Leo. We have opposition from B.A. McClintock, Hannah Michaud, uh, Roseanne Michaud, Cheryl B. In support from Fuanani Ona Ona, uh, Fion, from Kay Piltz, from Mihoko Ito, from Terry Matsui, all in support. These names are in opposition. Jacob Franco, Noreen Doherty, Anna Gilbert. Uh, Gilberti, in support from Patty Teruya, David 
uh, Arakawa, uh, Dean Nishina. Dean, are you here offering comments? Um, Benjamin uh, Kudo, please proceed with your testimony. Yeah, you can come forward. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Uh... Uh, Senator Baker and members of the committee. I just wanted to offer some support, uh, very strong support for the candidate, Nomi Kawai. Um, I hired Nomi when she was a young woman, 28 years ago as an associate with uh, the firm that we were with and have uh, witnessed her growing into maturity and knowledge and expertise in certain areas of the law that I'm very proud of her and her accomplishments. She brings to the table, I believe, uh, to the commission a diversity of interests, which, which is, I think, a health, healthy thing to have on administrative bodies. She brings with her a, a very uh, good knowledge and expertise in environmental law, land use law, and also PUC law. Um, and I think uh, that uh, knowing her personally, she is a person of very high integrity. She is a person who is well balanced, is very sensitive to the environmental concerns of different uh, communities and agencies. And during the 28 years, we, we, we were able to practice in all of the different counties uh, in the state. So we, we understand the nuances and, and uh, particularities of the, of the differences in the, in the different counties and, and respect them and have dealt with them in the work. So I would submit to you that uh, her nomination will bring value to the commission and will add to the uh, commission's work. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dan. We have uh, all of the rest of these are late testimonies. Uh, in opposition, Patricia Green. Uh, in support, Lorraine Akiba. I don't think Lorraine is in the audience. Uh, opposition, David Hunt, Robert Kobison. Uh, in support, Greg uh, Vione and Charlotte Poy. Uh, in opposition, Bianca Asaki, Ariel Murray, Murphy, I'm sorry. Shannon Rudolph and William Reese Liggett. Is there anyone else here or on Zoom that wishes to offer comment on Governor's Message 754? If not, we ask the nominee to come forward and uh, address the committee. Good morning, Senator Baker. Good morning. Vice Chair Chang and members of the Committee on uh, Commerce and Consumer Protection. Uh, my name is Naomi Kawai. I am extremely humbled and honored to be named as a nominee to the Public Utilities Commission. If confirmed, it will allow me to fulfill my desire to return to public service after 30 years since serving as a legislative aide in the city council before going off to law school. The commission has a vast amount of responsibilities and duties in its oversight of public utilities in Hawaii to ensure their establishment and their continued maintenance at, of services at a rate that's fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory to its customers. The commission acts as a policymaker, collaborator, and decision maker at times in its quasi-judicial capacity. I take each one of those duties and responsibilities very seriously. And I believe that my skills, my experience as an administrative environmental and land use attorney can assist the commission in navigating through some of the laws and constitutional oblig obligations that the commission must consider when making decisions on matters before them. To this end, personally, I will strive to listen to everyone balance the interests of the state with the different perspectives, such as the need to fulfill our state energy goals, that's important, but also analyze the environmental impacts, consider the social and economic impacts as well. This past month, it has my, been my pleasure and my honor to meet with the members of the Senate and the House, various community leaders, environmental groups, and <coughs> industry representatives. I would like to thank everyone who has taken the time out from their busy schedules to meet with me, educate me, and for sharing their thoughts and ideas on how to make this commission better. And they really opened their hearts and their minds to listen to me and to give me a fair shake. And I really 
pro I promise them that I will balance everything and listen to them and uh, tackle some of these tough issues that are before the commission. Again, to those that I met with and whom they represent, I will do my best to be fair, to listen, and to balance all interests. Finally, I want to thank my family and my friends, my mentors, the governor, Scott Glenn, and other members of the governor's administration who have supported me through this journey. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Members, do you have any questions for our nominee, Senator uh, Sanford? Yes, Senator? thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, um, Ms. Kuaya, for, for coming before us and putting your name forth as a nominee. My question goes to the concerns of the opposition. And I believe, and, and I thank you also for allowing me to interview you before today, Siren. And as I mentioned to you in my interview, um, you have big shoes to fill. I right? do. With, um, with Jay Griffith's um, designation or retirement. Um, what, how do you propose in the PUC you would handle the Hu Honua's continuing petition? I mean, are you going to recuse yourself, or or what? What will we? What we? What will we in the public see as your position? I can't comment on any specific project, but on projects that uh, that will come before me that in which there might be a potential conflict, um, I will discuss that with uh, PUC Council, the Ethics Commission, and my fellow, fellow commissioners to determine whether or not I need to recuse myself on those particular issues. Um, as I discussed, um, with respect to Hu Hanoa, I was asked to do a due diligence memorandum on their behalf, um, which I did. Um, I did not represent them on any uh, PUC rate matters. It was actually an environmental and land use due diligence mem memo. And most of my clients that um, are from the energy sector um, I've been asked to actually do a due diligence memorandum for them, which is basically outline all their legal permitting responsibilities um, you know, if they are to do a project in Hawaii on particular pieces of land. So again, I would have to disclose that uh, and discuss that with uh, commission staff and ethics commission. So um, your position right now is to, to merely disclose and discuss and not do an outright um, Recusal. It depends on the case. I, I can't, again, um, I would have to, I can't, I, I'm not exactly sure which case uh, would come before me. Um, so I, anything regarding Hu Honua? Because I mean, that's, that's, if you look at all the opposition, right, mm -hmm. that, that's, um, that's the main concern right now because they're, it, it's pending. I think that if there's one, I would have to take a look at the record. I really don't, I haven't been following Fukunoa. Okay. Um, so I would really need to discuss the matter um, okay. with, with Commission Council and the Ethics Commission to determine. I don't want to make a firm position one way or the other. I understand the concerns of the public and, mm -hmm. um, and I will take that into consideration in my final decision as to whether or not I should outright recuse myself from that position. Okay, thank you very much. Members, any other questions? Senator Ribier. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Hi. Um, could you describe for us the, the role that just so we can all um, start with that, the, uh, the role that you've played in, in representing firms that came before the PUC? Sure. So um, just as background, um, I represent primarily telecommunication companies, uh, one in particular, and it started off with uh, basically they needed a attorney to assist them with leasing and land, land use work. Um, then as this is back in the mid nineties, as they evolved, I got kept getting bought out. Um, I became basically a PUC attorney by default, assisting them in change of control dockets before the PUC. Um, that's primarily where my appearance, active appearance before the PUC has been for the past 30 years. Um, in addition, I have advised uh, small wastewater companies and water companies on compliance issues. And that actually has been um, a result of me doing some environmental and land use work for them. And I've identified some problems uh, um, with their systems that 
should require PUC review, um, and I advise them as such. Um, so that's pretty much my experience before the PC. I did represent Nextera. I was, I think, one of 10 attorneys representing Nextera. And I was probably the last attorney, uh, PUC attorney in the state to get hired by anybody. Uh, and um, I was uh, hired because I did have control, uh, change of control experience before the PUC. And in any of that, did you, uh, were you in a position to present to the PUC or to, um, you're writing, for lack of a better word, brief or you're writing reports that were used uh, as, as the part of the council? and advice to the PUC? Or was that just to the, were you advising the company or were you testifying before PUC? Uh, is this with respect to Nextera? Next, uh, Nextera in particular. Okay. Yes, actually I did appear before the, I was one of 10 attorneys that uh, appeared on behalf of Nextera and I did cross-examination for okay. them and I did uh, participate in brief writing. Did you have a question? Oh, well, you're done. Oh. Okay, um, thank you. So there was a um, testimony a, a moment ago where they um, talking about advancing the public interest. How do you see your role in that and how will you help promote the public trust and, and balance sometimes very uh, conflicting decisions? I believe um, as a state agency, I have a constitutional mandate if I am selected to, uh, to serve on the commission to take the public trust into account. This is a very, um, serious obligation and it's been mandated by the state constitution that I balance and weigh all of the competing interests both from the state energy side but also the environmental the community the native Hawaiian issues and come to a decision and as I explained to a lot of the groups that I met with um, I might not agree with them on all the things but I have an obligation to at least explain my position in, in my decisions and I do not have a problem with writing dissenting opinions if I disagree with the majority's opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've seen and I've monitored throughout the years um, the evolving magnitude of this uh, public trust um, obligations of the commission. And I, again, I take that very seriously as an attorney. Is, um... If, if a company is far down the path and, and they've invested lots of money, um, is that a consideration that, that should be weighed or is the question on whether or not a project should proceed from today um, more important? How, I mean, does it, does it matter what somebody has invested in the past to get to this point or is the question really about the value for the public going forward? I think it depends on a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. There's legal doctrines that are involved and I have to keep those legal doctrines um, in mind because they're, they're also constitutional obligations mandated from the federal government. Um, and I would have to take that into uh, account, but I have a continuing obligation to balance the interests of the state against something uh, like continued investment. And one of the things that you have to take into account was the investment line, or was it based on some, some type of representation of the government and some reliance of the company on the government? So yeah, those are some constitutional doctrines that play into, and I have to balance that with also my public trust responsibilities as well. So when we have our 2045 mandate we're trying to get there mm -hmm. we've got a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of projects in play and a lot of decisions to make um how hard might it be for the um for the public utilities commission to change course maybe not on any individual projects maybe, maybe there's new information that comes out that um, I don't know, there has to be a, a, a change of course again i'm just asking what going forward you know there's the, the idea of sunk cost Right. Or, you know, you go, well, gee, we lost that money, but it doesn't matter. How do we go forward? I'm not quite sure what you're asking, but um, I believe, well, the state legislature uh, has imposed the mandates. And, you know, uh, as an attorney, I have to follow the legislature and, and what things that they have instructed us as the commission to follow and balance. And I, and I really looked at every single aspect and, and try to research kind of 
the background of those laws and what things that the commission, they wanted the commission to take a look at. And I will probably continue to take that into account. What was the intent of the legislature when they passed certain laws? What things did they want me to take into consideration? And if they feel that 2045 is a hard set date, then we have to figure out a way to get there or we have to go back and tell the legislature we are not able to meet it. So, Straight information, I guess, is useful all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chairman, I ask you one more question, one more. And then I'll yield to you. Thanks. Um, so, conflicts with with the community. You heard some testimony from from Kahuku, and they're they're still mm -hmm. scarred by um, the Napulmakani yes. project. Um, how will you weigh the the this um, conflict where you got the the community interest and in screaming, "Please don't do this," and then you've got this twenty forty five mandate, and you've got developers saying this is great. How are you going to sift through all that? I think the public trust doctrine comes into play. I, I don't think uh, it's, and that's a constitutional, state constitutional requirement. And I have to take into account um, the Native Hawaiian and the community and the environmental interests when I'm trying to fulfill my obligations and the deadline set to set by uh, the legislature. So the PUC does have um, some control over the siting. And, and then the PUC could say, well, wait a minute, that's not going to work in this situation. Right. Be beyond the land use decision, but right. maybe and just I, a real, think, great, higher policy question. Right. And, and I think the, the state Supreme Court has given us some outlines as to what they expect in our decisions when we're uh, issuing opinions or decisions on, on those types of issues. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Yeah. Um, this um, why you know this, this uh, an issue came up I guess some time ago about the burning of wood as a way of source of energy. Right? There's been various studies that say you know it's a bad way of uh, trying to achieve low lower uh, CO two emissions. You burn it versus some other ways. So how would you look at it? Would you look at the science that comes with it? And I'm sure there might be competing views of it. And how would you balance that off going forward if something like that came forward to you? Well, I think the state legislature has mandated certain things that I take a look at and take that into mind. And um, I have to look at all the studies that are presented to me. I can't just take a look at one side or the other. I have to take a look at both. And, seriously ask questions of both sides as to some of the uh, studies that they, information that they present to me. But, uh, you know, the state legislature included biomass and biofuels mm -hmm. in, as list of uh, renewables that we should take that into account. And so I can't just automatically eliminate it. I have to consider it because it is in the state, uh, in HRS 269. Um, but I will be taking a look at, you know, do they fit in the criteria that the state legislature mandated under law? But if you found that uh, law was mandated in the, <clears throat> in the law, but the science would indicate to you that uh, it's incorrect, in the view of what the legislature put into it. How would you rule it in on the PUC? If it, if it doesn't meet the requirements that the state legislature has stated, then I would probably, and, and, and there's strong evidence to that, then obviously that would play into my decision. So how would uh, you handle that when you, you, know, you represented a whole bunch of uh, you know, corporate interests? Right? Yes. And so when you're being paid for that corporate, uh, you know, couch, what, you do, what you're doing as an attorney, but now you come across the, in the PUC uh, issues that might put you in opposition to what was a former work as a corporate attorney. How would you handle that? Because then all the years that you spent supporting some of their interests, now you have to sit on the other side and say, you know, it doesn't matter now because it's a new day. I have no pro problems ruling against my former clients. Mm -hmm. I, I think at this point, I would see myself as representing the state 
And that the state is my client and I'm going to advocate on behalf of the state. Thank you, thank you. Avala, did you have, did you wanna ask me yeah. a question? <clears throat> earlier part, oh, earlier part you was, uh, we was talking about um, permitting and information on how going forward, large opposition, you know, we heard it, um, in the opposition testimony and, and uh, Senator Gill brought it up. But the concern that I have, you know, even when you look to the permitting and the permitting was all, you know, T's was crossed, I's was dotted, but the community was overwhelmed being mislead to this project. Uh, as a PUC, as you being on the PUC, what measures would you take in consideration if this project came before you now and wasn't built and came before you now and with all the opposition, even though the permittings, everything was all in and everything with the large amount of community opposition as a PUC, what would you look into this project more that this, this would had never, uh, maybe never could happen? What would you have looked into with this overwhelming opposition? I, thank you, Senator. Again, it goes to my public trust responsibilities to consider those uh, those community concerns. And uh, just because a developer comes in and has all the permitting requirements, if you've ever seen any of my due diligence memos, I've always I'll have a separate section regarding community concerns and advising my clients about engaging with the community. And I would hope that uh, companies that come before the Public Utilities Commission does engage early with the community and tries to address some of their issues. Um, that's something that uh, <coughs> Mr. Kuro and I have done for the past 30 years is advise our clients to go into the community and try and get, seek consensus and to build projects based on that information that they got back from the community. And sometimes we, we made the hard recommendation to go back. We're not going to start permitting until they've engaged the community. So that's that's kind of where I'm bringing my experience uh, on my successful projects have always been when we took a time out and said, hey, go back. Yeah. The reason why I bring this up is because, uh, um, you know, you're all talking about environmental justice. Um, mm -hmm. Everything is on my side of the island or is in Kauku mm -hmm. or renewable energy. Anything would happen to the island. Uh, everything would be shut down, mm -hmm. especially on our side of the island mm -hmm. because we have everything. And um, when I first got here and I listened to, um, I guess, the Hawaii um, energy uh, from the state, and we asked that question ever since this whole big thing with the windmills. From then to now, what had changed in the technology that we have today that would ensure of this um, process would never happen again to any community? The reason why I'm bringing this up is because Camp Palihua is in my community and it's called Camp Timberline. And they wanted to go ahead and make windmills from Makakilo Mountain all the way to Nanakuli Valley, all around that area, had big opposition to the Gill family in, in, in building these windmills, especially with all the picture, I mean, with all the historicalness on that island, I mean, on, on that mountain. I, I just wanna know as you as a PUC, um, we had other projects that the PUC came in and they did their due diligence. But you as being on the PUC, um, when it come to projects like this, and I know the landowners, they all like say that they can do whatever they like. But when these things come to you guys, how do you sort out the need for 2045 and the need of not hurting the people and the environment? Okay, first of all, um, it is a it is a state mandate, and that, yes, we do have to meet the 20, 2045 uh, deadline. However, um, I also have this obligation, and it's embedded in the PUC uh, regs and regulations and uh, state law to also consider other factors. And I'm I'm sorry, Native Hawaiian issues, uh, cultural issues, um, archaeological issues, those place a very high standard on what I need to take a look at and how I meet those goals. And the Supreme Court has said that repeatedly. 
Um, and so if they have not adequately addressed it um, one way or the other, um, you know, I'm going to have some serious concerns with that particular project as it comes, comes before me. Thank you for that. The reason why I say this is because technology is advancing so much. You see I, it on renewable energies. Even on the roof now, you get different kind of tile that you can, you can use for energy. Right now, coming before you guys, and probably going to be coming before you guys, mm -hmm. is the offshore wind turbines. Mm -hmm. And this is a big concern of everyone that loves fishing, using the water, uh, recreation, everything that you can think of. So this is going to be a very controversy uh, situation coming to before the QC. So to be proactive in, in, in going forward, I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I don't know if you've seen the video. I did a platform for the recharging, and this thing is massive. So for the safety of the community, and especially my community, because that's where they want to put them, when these things fall apart, these are the things that you guys look for. You guys look at uh, the construction part and, uh, and, and the, dirt, uh, the, the, the need for it, because... There is the wave technology. Yeah, we've seen this yeah. all over the world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have great waves on our side of the island. Mm -hmm. And nobody considering to do that. They want to put these things in. And, and this is the reason why I bring this up again about the turbines. Is because the same thing with the Kahuku one, with the permits, right? And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I was told. The reason why there was such an expert thing to put it up. Each windmill, the developer or the landowner, made about a million dollars on each windmill as fast as it could be put up. That's why some of them wasn't working, wasn't even connected, but they put it up anyway. So what I'm saying now, when they come before the PUC, before putting anything in our beautiful waters, please really look into this because if they're gonna put this in the water as a charging, charging now, it's not gonna be connected to land. It's gonna be a floating platform that batteries are gonna be on top. So when I was a little kid, my mom told me never put the battery in your mouth because it's dirty and dangerous. But now we can put this in our ocean where we live and we eat from, mm -hmm. we survive from. So as, as a PUC person going forward, how would you address these uh, coming before you guys? Um, then you don't give detail, but how are you gonna address this technology knowing that there's other technologies? How would you tell a client or a person that coming for the PUC what, I mean, like, what will be your advice to them? Well, I would have to take a look at the technology and exactly and assess what the environmental impacts are, as well as the uh, state fulfillment of its energy goals and balance all of that. I, I can't say one way or the other how I would come out on that particular project, because I seriously, I, I don't know enough information regarding that particular technology. But Keep in mind, you know, my background is an environmental lawyer. And so in the back of my mind, and having done due diligence on these type of projects before, I have certain things that I'm going to be asking and some things I'm going to be looking for when I draft my decision. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, any other questions? If not? Well, I'll go. I'll just have one okay. question, Madam sure. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, you've really impressed me with your long career in the private sector and your understanding of the legal requirements um, as a lawyer. As you know, the legislature has made clear its intent to protect the islands from the potential threats of climate change that we're already experiencing. We're very serious about um, reducing our, our uh, dependence on foreign oil. We are concerned about low rates for ratepayers who are the constituents of all of our communities. Can you give some assurance to this committee that you understand these issues, that you're passionate about these issues, and that on a, as a voice on the PUC, you'll be a crusader on these issues? I will. Um, I too have been monitoring climate change for the past 30 years. I've been monitoring it. Um, and uh, I am also very aware of what the impacts of you know, these high in energy rates will have on the less fortunate. So I will strive to um, balance everything and to be fair and honest. Um, when I first started off with Mr. Curtis 20 years ago, and we were talking about changing things uh, to a clean, cleaner energy, uh, we knew that there was going to be a cost 
higher cost uh, to um, people. Luckily, technology is changing so quickly where now some of the things that we couldn't even imagine are much cheaper than gas. And that's, that's wonderful. And I, I hope technology keeps changing so that more options are available to the customers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Members, any other questions? If not, uh, let's take a brief recess and we will go into decision making. Okay, we'll call the committee back to order. We do love our technology. Uh, so glad we have it because we'd have, we'd have been in real trouble if we hadn't had some kind of uh, technology uh, during the pandemic. Uh, members, uh, I think we've had uh, an excellent discussion back and forth with uh, the nominee and we've all reviewed her qualifications and it's my recommendation to the committee that we advise and consent. Uh, and take this measure to the floor for their uh, final action. Any questions or comments? Chair. Uh, uh, Senator Revere, oh, I'm you. looking right at you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for the recommendation. I I'm gonna support your recommendation, but I do feel it's important that I um, say, say a few things. I, I believe the candidate um, uh, has the ability and, and the, uh, the knowledge experience and, and, and I'm trusting she has the heart. I believe she has the heart to make the tough decisions uh, when they come. Uh, I know there's been a lot of opposition because of the companies that she represented. Um, an attorney is not necessarily the company they work for. Uh, they are a hired person. So I take that um, into mind as, as I think about this. And, and I, um, I believe she can do the work. I believe she can do it well and represent each of our communities uh, and, and make the tough call. We're counting on her to, to make the tough calls when it's, when it's not easy. So uh, I just wanted to say that. And, uh, for, and with that in mind, uh, I will be supporting your recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Nishihara, did you have anything you wanted to comment, add? Um, you know, I, I see that, you know, just the fact that you represented different companies that were in opposition to the community doesn't necessarily mean that when you're hired to uh, present their view, that is who you're working for. And as you said, you'd be working for the state, which is a different issue. And the state has a number of issues and concerns about working with other companies that some of you may have actually been supportive of. So I have no doubt that um, you can make that distinction and that you will carry forth and that you will do your due diligence and you'll do your, your utmost to, to carry out what you believe, what is the state's interest. And so I have no problem with offering you my support. Thank you, Senator. Anybody else wish um, to comment? Yeah, I'm just gonna make a comment. Um, when I looked at her answers, you know, she understands that being the PUC is being in a position similar to that of being a judge. It bothers me that she is not going to do an outright recusal, which a judge would, have, would do when they represent somebody who is going to be in front of them. And as such, um, I cannot support this nomination. Okay. Thank you. All right. Members, uh, the recommendation of the chair is to advise and consent. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, the governor's message. 754, recommendation is to advise and consent. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Decoit is excused. Senator Nishihara. Aye. Senator Riviere. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. No. Senator Favela is excused. The recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Uh, we wish you well uh, in your, your path uh, to the PUC. We will be looking forward for uh, some wonderful recommendations in support of all of our communities, the environment, and the need for energy that we all have. Uh, best wishes, we are adjourned. <laughs>